जय रार माधव कुंजा बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंजा बिहारी गोपी जन बल गिरिवर धारी गोपी जन बल भिवर धारी गिरिवर धा यशोरानंदन व्रज जन रंजन यशोरानंदन व्रज जन रंजन यामुना तिरावनचारी यामुना तिरावनचारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari <coughs> Jaya Om Vishnu Bhad Paramahansa Paravitika Charaja Astotarita to Sri Srimad His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jaya Iskam Bibiti Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Parudika Charja Ashtoto Tatashvi Srimad Glory to the assembled devotees. All glory to Sri Guru and Goranga. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So, on this fifth day of August 2024 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in chapter 10, text number 6 on page 427. Okay. Maharshaya Saptapurve Chatvaro Manavas Tatha Madhava Manasa 
जाता ये शाम लोक इमा प्रजा महर्षि सप्त पूर्वे षारो मन वस्तथा मन भावा मानसा जाता ये शांोक हिमा प्रजा महर्षि सप्त पूर्वे षारो मन वस्तथा मन भावा मानसा जाता ये शांोक हिमा प्रजा महर्षि सप्त पूर्वे षारो मन वस्तथा मन भावा मानसा जाता ये शांोक हिमा प्रजा महर्षि सप्त पूर्वे षारो मन वस्तथा मन भावा मानसा जाता ये शांोक हिमा प्रजा महर्षि सप्त पूर्वे षारो मन वस्तथा मन भावा मानसा जाता ये शाम लोक हिमा प्रजा चाय महर्षि सप्त पूर्वे Is it okay? Mod bhava mana sa jata. Ye sham loka hima praja. We need to have another book for her. Here, he'll he'll give it. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, because he'll need a book too. Yeah, you can sit. Well, you can sit there if you want, or sit on a bench, whatever. That'll be all right. Okay, page four twenty-seven. Okay, word by words. Maharshiya, the great sages, Sapta seven, Purve before, Chatvaraha, four, Manavaha Manus, Tata also, Mat Bhavaha, born of me, Manushaha, from the mind, Jata born, Yesham of them, Loke. In the world, imaha all this this prajaha population and Prabhu, I need to apologize because you were in the middle of trying to chant the verse and this whole thing happened and you didn't get the chance. Is it okay? All right, tomorrow for sure. All right. Translation, text six. The seven great sages and before them the four other great sages and the manus progenitors of mankind come from me, born from my mind. And all the living beings populating the various planets descend from them. Purport: The Lord is giving a genealogical synopsis of the universal population. Brahma is the original crea- uh, creature born out of the energy of the Supreme Lord, who is known as Haranyagarbha. And from Brahma, all the seven great sages, and before them four other great sages named Sanaka, Sananda. Sanatan and Sanan, Sanat Kumara, and the fourteen Manus are manifested. All these twenty-five great sages are known as the patriarchs of the living entities all over the universe. There are innumerable universes and innumerable uh, planets within each universe, and each planet is full of population of different varieties. All of them are born of these twenty-four patriarchs. Brahma underwent penance for one thousand years of the demigods. Before he realized, by the grace of Krishna, how to create, then from Brahma came Sanaka, San- Sananda, Sanatan, and Sanat Kumar. 
then Rudra, and then the seven sages. And in this way, all the Brahmins and Kshatriyas are born out of the energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Brahma is known as Pitamaha, the grandfather, and Krishna is known as Prabhitamaha, the father of the grandfather. That is, that is stated in the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, 1139. <laughs> Sorry. I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara, the uh, transcendental disciplic succession. So Krishna is kind of working up to text 8, in which he says, Aham sarvasya prabhavo, everything is emanating from me. Now he's giving uh, examples of what that everything is. In the previous two verses, he explained that all these different intangible things, like the intelligence, the knowledge, freedom from doubt and delusion, they also come from Krishna. So uh, the final conclusion after all of these coming from Krishna is that our, we also come from Krishna and we're part and parcel of Krishna this word part and parcel is like it means an anksha the word anksha in Sanskrit is, means a particle just like a, a drop of ocean water or a, a, a sun ray and the idea is that the sun ray also has a minute little bit of light and heat the sun has practically infinite light and heat. But because that ray is part and parcel of the sun, it has the same qualities. And a little drop of ocean water, it tastes salty. It has the same qualities as the vast ocean. And we, as part and parcel of God, we have the same qualities of God in minute degree. We, he has senses. We, have, we, we can learn a lot by un understanding that, that, that basic axiom that we're part and parcel of God. We can learn a lot about God by studying ourselves. That, that, that's, a, that's a fact. We have desires, he has desires. We have form, he has form. Uh, all these different things. Intelligence. So, but the, but the main principle here is something that's come up before, like in the seventh chapter, ninth chapter, where in the seventh chapter, Krishna says, uh, Boomer, Apa, Olo, Nolo, Vayo, Kung, Mano, Buddha, Deva, Cha, Ahankari, Yeti, Yama, Binna, Pakla, these are the different material elements which we're surrounded by all the time and which make up our own bodies. Solid matter, liquids, boomer uh, apple, anala, which is the, uh, the, the, the fire or the fire of digestion, various energies that we have. Vayu, breathing in and out, the air. Uh, and space, we're all taking up space. And then more, even more finer, the mind, the intelligence, and the ego. Mind, intelligence, or we know what they are. The ego is the sense of self. And because we're minute portions of Krishna, but because we're minute, we have the tendency to be covered by the external energy. Krishna never has that tendency. Therefore, he has a name called Achuta. Achuta means never falls down, never falls under the sway or the control of his own external energy. He's the master of all those energies. So how did we get in this situation? Here we are sitting in the material body. We have ups and downs. Sometimes there's, there's, there's pain. Sometimes there's pleasure. Fleeting pleasure. Fleeting pain also. It's a constant change. a churning until finally that the body, which is what our vehicle for feeling all these things, breaks down. The force of time and disease, accident, whatever it may be, old age. It's, it's just a complicated machine. The machines eventually fail. So then what happens? If we're completely identifying ourselves with the body, then it's a very terrifying experience because we're thinking, oh, I'm going to cease to exist. Or what will happen? Plus, meanwhile, you're agonizing. The body is giving you so much play in the mind. And that's, so it's a traumatic experience. So in, in, in our material condition or conditioned state, probably use these words, conditioned living entity, means that we're conditioned by our environment, by our body, by our circumstances. We're, we're living according to certain conditions. Uh, unconditioned means that we're not identifying with the body. We're identifying with the eternal, unchangeable soul. That's explained right in the second chapter, the beginning of the Gita. The soul never changes, and it is a little uh, particle which is, emanates consciousness, and it spreads throughout the body, with, through, through the bloodstream, more or less.
And that's why we identify it, because it, it, it seems to be us. What else could we be? This is my name, this is my age, this is my gender, this is who I am. You look in the mirror, that's got to be me. There I am, looking back at me. But that's a grand illusion. <laughs> it's, a, it's a grand illusion. That Maya is, we're, we're put under, by Krishna, we're put under the, the control of Maya to go through all of these diff, difficult experiences and eventually come to the proper conclusion that we should, instead of trying to serve this body and the senses, we should serve Krishna with the body and the senses. That is our, our real perfection. And as soon as we begin doing that, through usually the chanting of the holy name or other means, there's a certain transcendental pleasure that comes. We had this one, yesterday we had this wonderful festival. I trust many of you were there. Did you get to go? Yeah. All right. So that was amazing, huh? Oh, so, much, so much chanting and the beautiful deities and then the, the program outside and the free feast. I, I usually, uh, in, in years gone by, I would... Uh, go through the whole procession. This year I, I couldn't go through the whole procession. I'm getting a little older. So I did, you know, maybe an hour. And then I went ahead. I had one of those nice coconuts. Did you should try one of those coconut things? They, they're called Dobbs, right? Yeah, very tasty. They refresh. You know, usually I, I get some watermelon or whatever. And then relax a little bit. Then go to the fruit, free food booth to see if there's any service. And mostly there's no service. I always see Buddy Narayan Swami. He's sitting there uh, giving out the nectar. That's his usual thing. Year after year, he would because he could sit, you know. Uh, but he loved doing that. And so this year, he wasn't there. You know, it was, it was, it was, he wasn't even supposed to be at the Rathi He was supposed to be in Boise, Idaho. But his di diabetes sometimes gives him trouble, and he, he couldn't go. So I didn't think he was going to go to the uh, Rathi but he did. He was, you know, he was able to go on the procession, which is quite enlivening. So I'm sitting there. I got to do the, the, the nectar. You know, so filling up the nectar, putting out, and building up a little. Then a, a group comes, especially at the beginning. There's so many people coming for the free fruits, and they, I need more nectar, more nectar. So I did it about for about an hour. While, while I was doing it, I was remembering. If you read about the the temple in Puri, the Jagannath Puri temple, that's a big thing. Giving out free prasadam, right? How many offerings they have? Upwards of 50 offerings a day. You know, it's it's a major program, feeding the prasadam. And it's wonderful because you know what it is. This is mercy of the Lord. If anyone eats the prasadam, they become purified. They become attracted to Krishna. So I'm giving out this nectar and thinking, you know, and, and remembering that pastime. But it's it's. Uh, I was there for the first one in L.A. Forty-seven years ago, 1977. <laughs> And it was quite an adventure starting it, because up until that point, the only Rathiatra in all of ISKCON worldwide was in San Francisco. At, around this time, you know, the middle summer. Because that's where it started, and we said that's, that's where it's going to be. And there were some amazing Rathiatras there with Prabhupada in attendance. But then in 1977, uh, Jayananda, the, the previous year, there was this tremendous Rathiatra, which unfortunately I couldn't, I couldn't attend, because I'm sitting in L.A. working on... Back to Godhead magazine. I didn't have money. I'm just a brahmachari. And no, but the Rathiad was going on in New York City, down Fifth Avenue. Ten years, practically to the day, when after Prabhupada founded the movement in a little storefront in Lower East Side, Manhattan. You know, with a handful of, of followers, you know. And then the, ten years later, the whole thing had built up. We had this tremendous Rathiatra. Uh, three carts coming down Fifth Avenue, probably said the most important uh, street in the most important city of the world. And there was this Prabhupada riding on the cart, you know. I, I, of course, saw it later in, in YouTube, and devotees gave this. So uh, it, it, it is, it is uh, one of the many, and, and you realize if you, you know, you're part of the, if you're in the ashram, that every day is set up to be a little mini festival. The, 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 the morning program, you know, you're greeting the deities and the singing and dancing is there. And, you know, the, 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 of course, the chanting of japa as well. And then comes a class and finally the prasadam. So it's a little festival every day and the evening also. And, I, and from the beginning, I was seeing the different in the mood. In the morning, it's quite contemplative. The lights are off, you know, and people are swaying and really meditating. Some saradava, it's all about the guru. But in the evening, you're, you're glorifying... Lord Chaitanya's revelation of himself as the Supreme Personality of God to his intimate devotees in Navadweep. The song is all about him being worshipped on the banks of the uh, Ganges in, in Mayapur, you know. And the lights are up and everybody's 
dancing and chanting from the beginning, you know, it's a different mood. So that's real life. And what is it all designed for? To get us out of this illusion of identifying with our bodily uh, situation, mental situation, material relationships, which are all very temporary. The whole, isn't it, everyone who is of Indian birth around here in, in, in this room probably learned this, this mantra. Isn't it? Tamasi ma jyotir gama. Did you ever learn that? Yes. See? <laughs> it's a very wonderful thing. Tamasi ma jyotir gama. Uh, uh, yeah, asatoma sadgamaya mrityuma amritam gamaya. So it can be understood in two ways. Prabhupada uh, uh, understood it to mean this is an injunction. Don't stay in the darkness, come to the light. Don't stay in the temporary, ever changing asat, but come to the eternal nature of the spirit. And don't stay in, in uh, the world of death, mrityu loka, you know, but come to the amritam. Amritam means the world of uh, eternal life in the spiritual world. Now, how to do that? So it's also, I, I understand grammatically, it can be a prayer. Oh Lord, please take me from darkness to light, from death to immortality, from the impermanent to the, to the permanent. So this is, this is very nice. It kind of, uh, it's something you wouldn't, you know, if you just go through a regular education in the West, you're not going to get that. You're thinking, oh, you have to go to school so you get educated. That's the light from total ignorance to understanding materially. No. Real knowledge begins with the question or the, or the, or the injunction of the, of the beginning of Vedanta Sutra. Atato Brahma Jigyasa. Now that you're a human being, you have to inquire into the ultimate truth, Brahma. What is that? Janma Jasa Yataha, second sutra. That from which everything comes, which sustains everything, and into which everything dissolves ultimately. You don't find these, any kind of emphasis like that in Western education. You have to know that. No, we understand how all the matter works. and They take it that, that life comes from matter. No, that's the opposite. Matter comes from life. Matter is produced by the ultimate life, Krishna. And even in our own experience, Prabhupada would give the example of the lemon tree. You know, there's that tree standing there. It's a living entity. And it's producing these lemons. And the citric acid is all in the, in the lemons, you know. So that, that, that soul there, is, which is the, the, the reason why the tree is growing and working, is ultimately producing this citric acid. It's not that, you know, it's not that the, 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 the living entity in any, is produced by any combination of matter. That's a false idea. So Krishna is saying here, in the, uh, the present verse we just read, that the, the, the great sages, and he's given, these are the great sages who are, you know, progenitors. They're giving, giving birth to so many generations of living beings. Uh, they're coming from me. Mahasya except the Purve, the seven, and then there's four others, those are the, the, the four Kumaras. Madhbhava Manasajata. They're, they, they're coming from my nature, generated from my mind, from the Krishna's consciousness. Everything comes from consciousness. Yesham Loka Hima Praja. And that's how this population has all come out. So, in two verses, and I think hopefully we can reach that in text eight, which is the beginning of the first of the four, he gives the general principle. You know, Aham Savasya Bhavavo. Everything emanates from me. Mattak sarvam bhavar today. From our point of view, every, everything that is has come from Krishna. From Krishna's point of view, is aham, I generate everything. You see? So it's, it's a emph- way of emphasizing. Then, then what? Those who understand this, aham sarvasya mattak sarvam bhavar iti matva, those who know this to be true, bhajante imam, they worship me. How? Buddha, bhava, samanvita. Buddha, you have to be intelligent. Bhava, samanvita, in all circumstances. And then the next verse, he gives a real quick summary of how they worship me. We'll get to it when we get there. Basically, it's by becoming Krishna conscious and serving him. And then from his side, he sees, oh, is that serving me? And he provides the intelligence by which we can come to him. So, so, and by his, by his, by his uh, compassion, his mercy for anyone who's making that effort, he gives the he destroys the darkness in the heart. There's the Tamasima Jyoti Gama. Personally, because he's there as a super soul. So it's, it's very important verses coming up. And here he's just giving a summary of how everything that exists uh, is coming from him, which is one of the basic principles of Krishna consciousness. Okay, any uh, discussion on these points? Let's go on. Now remember, in Sanskrit, this is called the, all, every chapter is a different kind of yoga. So this is vibhuti yoga, 
meaning the, the, the yoga or the chapter that deals with the, with the glories of the Lord, the, the different uh, opulences, and who make a whole list after Arjuna asks, how, how am I to see you in this world? So basically, wherever you see anything that's very glorious or beautiful or powerful, know that that's a, a spark coming from a spark in my splendor. It's a way of remembering Krishna. Okay, text seven. Etam vibhutim yogam cha. Mama yo veti tatvataha. So vikalpena yogena. Yujjate natra sangshayaha. One who is factually convinced of this opulence and mystic power of mine engages in unalloyed devotional service. Of this there is no doubt. Purport. The highest summit of spiritual perfection is knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Unless one is firmly convinced of the different opulences of the Supreme Lord, he cannot engage in devotional service. Generally, people know that God is great, but they do not, they not, do not know in detail how God is great. Here are the details. If one knows factually how God is great, then naturally he becomes a surrendered soul and engages himself in the devotional service of the Lord. When one, is fact, when one factually knows the opulences of the Supreme, there is no alternative but to surrender to Him. This factual knowledge can be known from the descriptions in Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita and similar literatures. In the administration of this universe, well, let me get across this illustrations here. In the administration of the universe, there are many demigods distributed throughout the planetary system. And the chief of them are Brahma, Lord Shiva, and the four great Kumaras and the, other demi and the other patriarchs. There are many forefathers of the population of the universe, and all of them are born of the Supreme Lord Krishna. The Supreme Personality of God at Krishna is the original forefather of all forefathers. These are some of the opulences of the Supreme Lord. When one is firmly convinced of them, he accepts Krishna with great faith and without any doubt and he engages in devotional service. All this particular knowledge is required in order to increase one's interest in the loving devotional service of the Lord. One should not neglect to understand fully how great Krishna is, for by knowing the greatness of Krishna, one will be able to be fixed in sincere devotional service. So, this um, understanding, the the, 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 the practice of devotional service depends on faith and knowledge. One has to have, and they, they go together. And that faith is nourished, as so many things in Krishna consciousness, by association with the faithful. This was, this was Prabhupada's great potency because of his own uh, qualities and his obviously 100% conviction of what he was doing, and his, his obvious happiness and bliss that he was experiencing in Krishna consciousness, he was able to inspire uh, thousands, ultimately, to take up the process. Now, of course, that was also reflected in his representatives, and of course in his books. But, but, but when, you, when you analyze it, it's all that, in that, that uh, association, that sangha, right? the satsangha, with the pure soul. And when the soul is really pure, the potency is there. Wonderful verse by Lord Chaitanya, who is none other than Krishna, in his teachings to Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami was his first disciple, the first one he taught. Uh, then he taught his brother Sanatan, elder brother, uh, for a longer period of time. But Rupa, he imparted the, 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 all of the truths of the bhakti rasa, which is the essence of, of bhakti yoga, the real different relationships. And Rupa Goswami then wrote the book, called the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which Sri Prabhupada translated as the nectar of devotion, giving the, the, the science of bhakti and the goal of bhakti, describing all the different ways that one can love Krishna, the, the different friends and his parents and the, and the gopis and so forth. So it's a very important book, essential book. And that, that, that book and Rupa Goswami's other writings and his position is why in this line of bhakti we're known as Rupanugas, Anuga means one who follows, and Rupa is Rupa Goswami. So the more that we can understand those principles, put them to, 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 to action in our own lives, we'll be real followers of Rupa Goswami, and we'll get the mercy. 
will get the mercy and, 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 and of the, all the acharyas and Krishna himself. And he's, uh, he's, he's there. He's there in all of our hearts. He knows what we're thinking. And, and when he sees, this is a, a, a verse in the Bhagavatam, second chapter, first canto, second chapter, text 17 or 18. I think it's 17. Shrinvatam Sukata Krishna Punya Shavana Kirtana Ridyantaksto Yabhadrani Vidunoti Surit Satam. So this is a very rich verse. So first is Shrinvatam Sukata Krishna. When Krishna understands, because he's in our heart, that they're hearing we're hearing about him sincerely from the proper source and with, with faith. Swakata, his own kata, Swakata Krishna, Punya Shavana Kirtana. Which kata, just by hearing and chanting, you become pious. It purifies the heart, purifies the soul. So that's very important. Punya shavana kirtana. Ridya antaksto, situated in the heart. Ridya antaksto. Abhadrani vidunoti. He cleanses away all of the unwanted things in our consciousness, in our heart. Uh, because he is surit satam. He is the best well-wishing well friend of the satams, the saints, the, the devotees. So we want to become Krishna's friend. He's already our friend, but we have forgotten him. We're turning away from him. But if we show friendship by hearing about him, serving him like that, then within the heart, he, by his own power, he cleanses. Now, what are some of those abhadras? Bhadra means something very auspicious. Abhadra is inauspicious. Those abhadras are, are uh, the accumulated material desires over many births and our ignorance and our uh, feelings of enmity toward others, all of these things that develop from the, from the modes of nature, the mode of ignorance where we, we, we carry grudges you know, to our grave. Oh, he ins insulted me when I was in the third grade. I'll never forgive him, you know. <laughs> or something like that, you know. <laughs> Can easily go that route. So there's so many of those things in our heart which are occluding or, or, or obscuring uh, our pure consciousness of Krishna. So they, they, it's, a, it's a cleansing process. All that, that wonderful chanting in the, in the Ratha Yatra. Don't you feel blissful, a little intoxicated after that? <laughs> I, I, I don't know how many of you were able to see that last kirtan, the, the one with uh, Raghunath and, and Janavi, Janavi Harrison. Oh, what a gift. You know, she's world famous. You know, she came here to the Ratha Yatra. I just stayed right in front, right at the edge of the stage the whole time, you know. They, they wanted to lift up hands. Yes, let me lift our hands. You chant like this. You know. <laughs> that was very inspiring. I know him personally. He came, before he joined, he came to see me when I was in Miami in like eight, 1984, maybe, 83, maybe 85. And uh, he came to my room. I had a room where I was doing the editing. Look out the window, there's the ocean. I mean, it was, it was, it was right uh, closer than this, literally 100 feet from the ocean. I see the... Uh, the uh, the the uh, what do they call them the, those those ships people take a vacation on cruise cruise ships going past this way north and then coming back down you know <laughs> next day a few days later so he came there and and I you know shared my thing shared a few shlokes you know and and uh, whatever I do and uh, later on later on means like two years ago I was <laughs> like uh, he invited me to come on. Uh, I don't know if you know, there's the Bhakti Center in New York in the First Avenue. It, it, it's, it's not exactly ISKCON, but it's, it's very closely associated. And he stays there, and it's in Rodavodi Kaustaba, and they do readings of Bhagavatam for Zoom attendees all over the world, you know. But they also have another thing where they invite people to come to do their own little thing. So he invited me to come and share the shlokas and the poems and all the things that I do, you know, which I did for a half hour. And uh, he's come through here, and uh, we're old friends. So there he was, you know, leading the kirtan in the middle. It was very ecstatic. And you feel, you know, that, 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 that I, I felt purified by the whole experience of the Ratha Yatra. You know, you feel lighter, you feel joyful, you feel this was definitely worth it, you know, <laughs> the effort. And when you get a little older, it's a little harder to make the whole procession, you know. I kind of gave it, gave it everything I had the first half hour when I did the kirtan. <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's a blissful exhaustion, you know. So that's Krishna consciousness. It's always, there's always more to do. There's always services that you can do. And by doing them, you always uh, feel connected to Krishna. That's the whole idea. And that connection is by nature purifying and very blissful. 
So uh, we're, we're reading about now the vibhutis. This Prabhupada gave a new uh, meaning to the word opulence. If you look up opulence in the, in the dictionary, it's, it means the degree of wealth that you have. It's not something. It's not if you're very beautiful, you have that op- opulence. That's one opulence. But that's the way Prabhupada. He, he had, Krishna, Bhagavan means he has bhaga. Bhaga means in, an opulence. So they have the six opulences in full. You know, so that, that's, it's going to enter. If it hasn't already, it'll enter into the English dictionary. That's what happens with English language. You know, it keeps changing. So what are those six opulences that Krishna has? This is the definition of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan, given by Parashara Muni, the father of Veda Vyas. So, Aishwaryasya uh, Samagrasya Viryasya Yashashakshya Jnanam Vairagya Jnanam Vigyanam Not Aishwarasya, Samagrasya, Vyusha, Shishaka, Jnana, and, and uh, Vairagya. So, Shannam Bhagahitinya. I'm sorry, the third line, I'm a little weak, but I got the sixth. So the first one is wealth, which is what we, what we normally call of opulence. What does the Isha Upanishad say? Very first shloka, mantra, does anyone know? Thank you. Very good. <laughs> so this means that uh, Krishna owns everything. We have a right, as living entities, to take our share for maintenance. But not more than that. We shouldn't be greedy for anything more. But isha vasamidam sarvam, that the, the Lord owns everything. And we are simply maintained by him. There's another one. Nitcho nityanam chaitanas chaitananam eko bahunam yovadadati kam. And this is, I think, one of the first verses I ever memorized. So nitcho nityanam, of, of the, of the, uh, there, there's one eternal... And many eternals. Eternal what? Chaitanas Chaitananam. There's one eternal conscious being, and there's countless other eternal conscious beings. That's us. And how do we distinguish the, the one from the many? Eko bahunam yovadadati kaman. That one is supplying the necessities of all the others. So, obviously, we're part of the many, and he's part of the one. So, how does he do it? So, so then the, the six opulence, he has this unlimited wealth. Uh, is some various yeah, strength, power. Example, we have in the corner of each room, of, each, of this room, right? Lifting over that hill. If we try to lift 50 pounds on our pinky, we'll probably dislocate it. <laughs> He's holding it up. Not, 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 you know, he doesn't just lift it and then drop it like they do the weightlifters. Seven days, he's just standing there. It's a wonderful pastime. And all the Vijbasis, are under the hill, they're clustered under the hill, and all the rain is falling, and the, the, the hail is coming outside, and the thunder, but Indra can't, you know, they're untouched. And so they, so, now if you study Krishna Leela, it, it's intermittent association with Krishna. You know, the gopis, everybody, he goes out to the forest, and they're in separation, they're singing about him, but then he comes back, oh, wonderful, you know. But it's, 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 it's intermittent. But there he is, seven days and nights. Nobody slept, nobody ate. Everyone was just enthralled, you know, they were serving with Krishna. So far from being a, a destruction by Indra, it was an occasion, you know, to help these. So that's, that's uh, Viryasya, Samagra. That's complete strength, right? Yashisha, fame. Now, Krishna is also very famous throughout India, and now Prabhupada's made him famous all over the world. But as God, in general, everyone knows God, right? <laughs> So he's the most famous of anyone. Uh, that's the uh, Yashisha. And Shriya, this is very important, beauty. You, if you try to find the conception of God in any other established religion, you'll never find it, oh, yes, it's so beautiful, and then you just like it. No. I remember <laughs> we used to go down every, every Friday night on Harinam for many, many years to downtown. And uh, for the first few years, they were competing. The, the Christian would come out, and they'd be handing out their pamphlets, you know. One time, they even brought a little band out. They had violin and everything, you know, because we have all this music. It was a little pathetic, you know. They were standing on the corner. Anyway, they hand out the pamphlets, and I took one of them. See, what, what are they handing out, you know? So it was a Christian thing, you know. And then they had a picture at the end of the, the, the supplicants who were going in heaven and seeing God. What does God look like? You couldn't tell. He was so large, and you know there was no real features there. It was just like this. 
oh, you know, fear and trembling, you know. None of this intimate uh, rasa. But God, but God is surit. This is, the, this is a very important point. Surit satam is the end of that verse. He is the best well-wishing friend of especially the devotees, of everybody who's a devotee. Uh, everyone's a devotee. But they, they don't know it. But you can understand how, what an intimate, well-wishing friend he is, he is of yours when, you, when you're a devotee. And so uh, that's, that, you know, here he is, all powerful, he has all the beauty, but he cares about us. That's the whole thing. Surit means that the, 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 we have this uh, uh, different levels of friends. You know, he's an acquaintance. He's a good friend of mine, you know. But then we have the bosom buddies. That's the closest we have, you know, to surit, right? It's the heart. So Krishna is a well-wishing friend. And when he sees us taking just a little step toward him, he makes arrangement that we can increase it. Because he wants us to come back much more than we want to go back. That's our problem. We don't want to go back. But when we find out what a wonderful experience it is, even to just uh, do a little Krishna consciousness, we can expand and understand how blissful it is to be in that consciousness all the time, eternally. So, uh, the, here he talks about the vibhutis. Uh, this is part of, you know, my opulence is that I'm the source of everyone, everything. And one who knows this in truth, right? Mamilyo Veti one who is factually convinced of this opulence and mystic power of mine, engages in unalloyed devotional service. Of this there is no doubt. So con- the, the word convinced is, is, is carrying a lot of freight there. That means that there's faith. There's real faith. And you get, as I mentioned, the faith really is in, in, in imparted by association with the faithful. And there's a beautiful verse in the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Lord Chaitanya is teaching Rupa Goswami. And right at the beginning it teaches, Brahmande Brahmante Kon Bhagyavan Jeev Guru Krishna Basarai Pai Basare Pai Bhakti Lata Bij. Very nice. You're talking about the Bhakti Lata, which means a creeper or a vine of devotion that's growing in your heart as you practice devotional service. But that the seed of that creeper has to be planted and is planted by the great realized souls, by the Guru. And uh, this is what Prabhupada did. He came to America, and it took him a while to find some receptive souls. When he was uptown, and, you know, and he really didn't have a place of his own, he couldn't really make much progress. But when he, got, when he came downtown, uh, he, he, he was able to contact great, you know, very sincere souls like Mukunda Maharaj, Michael Grant became Mukunda Maharaj, and uh, Brahmananda and others who became his core beginning. And they themselves became advanced, and, and they were able to attract others. This is how it is, because they say, oh, what have you got? I don't, I don't have you. Pra- what kind of yoga are you practicing? Oh, it's a simple you know, bhakti yoga. Just chant this mantra. Here, take this, you know, chant and be happy. You know. All right, you know. And you see the early days, they would gather, and so many would come and chant and eat, and then some would stay and become serious, you know. I was, you know who I saw at the, at the festival? Kanchan Bala? And her daughter, you know. She's a historical figure. She joined in like 67, I think. Yeah, she was initiated early 67 in, in New York. She was just a kid. She was like 17 or something like that. But she was, from previous births, she was immediately attracted, you know, to the whole lifestyle and everything. <laughs> Very wonderful. She designed, she didn't carve that, that, this Garuda, but she designed the whole thing. She was an artist from the beginning. If you ever visit her apartment, her room her, it's covered with her paintings that she's done for Krishna. Very wonderful uh, devotee. So, uh, so what happens if one is convinced here? Who is convinced with faith, opulence, and mystic power of mind engages in unalloyed devotional service. Of this there is no doubt. So the idea is by knowledge, by faith and by knowledge, by association, we get the impetus to also render service. Beginning with the chanting, doing any little thing we can do, you know, but this is, the, this is the, the whole purpose of the temple like this, is that it provides different ways of, of serving. Every Monday morning, I know because I give class every Monday morning, and after Monday, in comes Subhadra with her little uh, charges, you know, to, to clean off. They wipe down the, they perform a service. They take all the mats and they wipe them down and then they dry them. And, this is, and it's, they're a little bit, this is a little emotionally disturbed people, you know, she, she, there's a place where they come from. But she has her little crew. There were several that weren't here today. There was only two of them. And I was reminded of an uh, experience I had when I was a pretty new bhakta in Brooklyn, you know. And we had so many devotees in this little temple that every, every maybe Sunday morning, I think, we did a maha cleanup. We should have a maha cleanup here. 
You know, we should do that regularly. It's a pastime of Lord Chaitanya. It's the Gundicha Marjan, right? Yeah. So anyway, what, one, one week my duty was to mop the temple. And mop the temple means get down on your hand and knees, you know. And you, <laughs> so I'm in the temple alone, except for the deities. Radha Govinda, Gornitai, and I think Jagannath. But anyone who's seen Radha Govinda, they're, you know, very, very beautiful. So I'm doing this service, and, and the, the uh, Yamuna, one of Yamuna's songs, Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya, Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya, and Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya, Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya, Radha Ramana. So she, yes. <laughs> so that's playing, and I'm mopping, and there's Radha Govinda, you know. I said, guy. I've, I've got the best job in the world, you know. <laughs> it's just, it was a menial service, you know. And it was just, it was just, uh, and, you know, I had nothing to my, my, you know, I was a little brahmachari. We didn't have our own clothes. You had a collective laundry. You threw everything in the night before, and whatever you could find that fairly matched, you got the next day. That was our life. But it was blissful. We'd go out three hours a day and chant on the streets of New York, you know. <laughs> I have a picture I could show you. This is before I even joined. I was Bhakt Tom. And I don't know if you know, who, who, who has heard of a Gaur, Gauravani? You know, Gauravani, the singer, he's one of the you know, famous. His father was a great artist and sculptor and also a singer. His name was Bardraj. His actual, nobody knew his name, he also says Bardraj, but his actual name is Varadaraj. Varadaraj means the king of givers of benediction. It's a name for Krishna. But the way Prabhupada spelled it and pronounced it became Bardraj, which is uh, the, the name of a, of a sweet-singing bird. And he said, oh, he's named after the bird because he's such a nice character. But anyway, so I, he's out there in the middle of Manhattan. He's playing the drum. And I'm, I didn't even have a dhoti on. You couldn't wear a dhoti unless you were uh, serious, and unless you moved into the temple. You had, you had to, anyway, I, I wasn't living in the temple yet. So there I am chanting on the streets at probably Fifth Avenue, you know. And I just... You know, completely happy. I wasn't <laughs> thinking, all right, what time is it? I got, you know, it's not like that. <laughs> so that's, that's, that, that's the Iskand that Prabhupada founded. And all over the world, when it spread, it, it spread on the strength of the holy name. Because when you chant, especially that long, there's a, there's a YouTube thing that I can share with you. This is very interesting. Uh, there was a show came, the David Suskind show, which I don't think anyone is old enough here. Or maybe you remember it, Parashakti? David Suskind? In the 70s? She, she knows. Uh, no, no offense. Yeah. We're all a senior. My hair grows out. It's white also. You know. So anyway, it was a, uh, <laughs> I, was, I had a little apartment. I was doing my job. I worked in a hospital. And then so I said, I, I, my, par my parents lived a, a few blocks away. So I said, oh, let me go see, watch some TV, you know, black and white. So I go there, and I had already visited devotees. I kept running into them. I wasn't really committed yet, but you know, I was getting interested. And I turned it on to David Susskind, and he was with all the devotees from the, from the local Brooklyn temple. You know, famous devotees like uh, Yogeshwar, and, and uh, Bardraj was there, and his wife, and, uh, and others who I later, I later met when I actually joined the temple. And the only, only, all I could describe is they all look so effulgent and blissful and, and you know, attractive. Yogeshwar, you know. And David Siskin was trying to ask questions, you know, what's your name mean? You know, he was explaining, you know, well, can you show me a little bit about how you pray? What is that? And so then they started a big kirtan <laughs> right there on the set. It went on for like 10 minutes, you know. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to see because that, that show, seeing them, attracted me to get more involved, you know, because I see that. How, how wonderful they were. And they were all convinced. He would ask them this about the philosophy. Men and women, they all knew the philosophy so well and we were explaining it, you know. And so that's really how Krishna consciousness spread because Prabhupada was always like that. You know, whoever he met, he would impress them with his purity and his sincerity and his bliss, you know. And so that's, that's our natural state. That's the point. All of this, you know, uh, misery and difficulty and worry and, and, and assassinations and whatever it is, you know, that's all modes of nature. It's not what we're supposed to be doing. And this, this is really uh, the, the, the revolution. This is the, the real revolution in consciousness that Prabhupada brought. Okay, I may be getting a little far afield. Whoa, it's late. All right, any comments or questions? And then otherwise we'll end with a...
couple of little ditties that I memorized. <laughs> All right, here's one that we can, we can uh, think about. It's based on a teaching of Lord Rishabdev. Now, Lord Rishabdev was actually an incarnation, but uh, he didn't manifest uh, the powers until after this, when he left home. He was a king, and he had a hundred sons, and this is, he's giving his final instructions to them. So this is the first verse of the, of the fifth chapter of the fifth canto. So I'm not going to give you that verse, but I'll give you my little poem based on the verse. Uh, don't, don't waste this precious human life, dear friend, by working hard for fleeting happiness. Through bhakti yoga, worldly life transcend and learn to taste divine love's endless bliss. So this is, the, this is it. We can have these little fleeting pleasures of sense gratification, you know, or we can cultivate the consciousness where we have unending, ever-increasing, transcendental bliss, which is natural. That's, what, that's what's there from the soul, and that's what's going on in the spiritual world. So that's one. And then, of course, uh, it, let's see, this was, you know, a meditation on Krishna. There's so many beautiful descriptions in the Srimad Bhagavatam. In the, in the 21st chapter, 10th canon, it's called the Venu Gita. Why is it called the Venu Gita? Venu Gita means the song of the flute. Because the whole thing is keyed on that. It's a short chapter, but it's based on Krishna entering into the forest with his friends and the cows. He's playing the flute. And then the gopis are at home, and what are they doing? They're remembering Krishna. They're chanting so many verses, beautiful poems describing Krishna. So this, this verse describes how he's entering into the forest with his friends playing the flute and everything. Uh, Sanskrit. Barha pidam natavadavapu karnayo karnikaram bibradan basak kanaka kapisham by jayanting chamalam randran venor hadadasudaya puri and go bavrinda vrinda ranyam sopatanamanam prabishad gita keti. With lovely peacock plume upon his head and fragrant flower placed upon each ear, he enters Brother's woods with graceful tread, a handsome dancing actor without peer. His gold and yellow raiment brightly glows, his splendid garland reaches to his knees, and from his luscious lips the nectar flows and fills his flute with charming melodies. As Krishna thus begins his blissful day, with coward friends who sing his glory sweet, he beautifies Vrindavan's forest way with fine impressions of his lotus feet. So you just send me an email, you better want to wait, I'll send you all my poetry, including that one. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. All right. All right, so we'll pick up with text eight tomorrow, which is the first of the four essential verses. <laughs>